Hello, my name's Julian Edgar, and I'm the author of the book Custom Air Suspension. What I want to talk about in today's video relates to any car with suspension. The springs might be air, the springs might be steel, the springs might be rubber, it doesn't matter. This is an idea that applies to all car suspension. So what is the idea? Natural frequencies. Oh, you're thinking, natural frequencies? That sounds really, really boring. Why would I be interested in that? But look, I think if you're interested in spring rates, if you're interested in wheel rates, if you're interested in suspension stiffness and how you measure that, I think you'll find this very, very interesting. It opens your eyes to a completely new way of looking at suspension, and it's also the way that's done in all of the top vehicle dynamics and suspension textbooks. So it helps you understand what they're talking about as well. So let's start off by talking about the behavior of a spring. Let's put a coil spring vertically on the ground, and then let's put a weight on top. So here's the ground. Here's the coil spring, and here's the weight. Now, what happens? Well, the first thing that you'll all know is that spring will have compressed by a little bit when we've put the weight on it. And the amount that the spring compresses when we put the weight on it is called the static deflection. Static deflection. Static deflection is really important for a reason I'll come back to in a minute. Now, we've got our weight, we've got our spring. Let's say we push down on the weight and then let go. What's going to happen? Well, you all know that the weight is going to bounce up and down on the spring. It's going to oscillate, go up and down like that. Okay, after a while it will die away. So now it's stopped. Now let's do it again, but this time let's have a stopwatch in our hand. So we push down on the weight, we release it. And then we time how many bounces it does over the next minute. Let's say it does 60 bounces in that next minute. Okay, it's dying away, but don't worry about that, just count the bounces. 60 bounces in a, in a minute is one per second, and we would give that what's called a frequency of one hertz, one bounce per second. All right, so what? Well, the bounces and the number of bounces depended on the stiffness of the spring, but it also depended on the amount of weight that was on top. So, let's put another weight on top. There's our second weight. The static deflection will have increased, and when we time it with our stopwatch, we'll also find that the natural frequency has gone down. Now, I hope you can start seeing that the number of bounces per second, the natural frequency, relates not only to the stiffness of the spring, it also relates to how big is the weight that it is supporting. So, if we go to a car and we measure its natural frequency, we're not only taking into account the stiffness of the spring, we're also taking into account the amount of weight that's working through that spring, and that is taking into account what is called the motion ratio, the leverage that the suspension arm has got over the spring. Hmm, all getting a bit complicated. Let's take a step back. The bigger the static deflection of the spring when the weight is put on it, the lower the natural frequency and therefore the softer the suspension is. The bigger the static deflection, the softer the system is in its behaviour and therefore the lower the natural frequency. So straight away we can see how important static deflection is, how much the system actually compresses when the weight is put on it. because. That's a good indicator. In fact, there's a mathematical relationship between static deflection and natural frequency. So that's a good indicator of how stiff or soft the system actually is. So you think, so what? This is all very nice in an obscure kind of way. How can you use it? Well, it gives you a universal measuring system. When you're looking at a particular car, you don't have to say, oh, what's the stiffness of the spring in pounds per inch, and what's the motion ratio, and then I need to work that out, and then I need to take into account the amount of weight that's working through. You don't worry about any of that. You just measure what the natural frequency of the car is. So, a sporting car might have a natural frequency of the suspension of 2 hertz. If you took the dampers out and bounced it up and down, it would bounce up and down twice a second. That's fairly stiff. A luxury car might have a natural frequency of only one hertz. You take the dampers out, you bounce it up and down, it goes up and down only once per second. Now, incidentally, the fact you take the dampers out doesn't change the natural frequency very much at all. It just makes it easy to measure and easy to describe. 
So by using natural frequencies, you've got a universal way of actually describing and specifying the stiffness of the suspension in that car, taking into account spring stiffness, taking into account motion ratio, and taking into account the amount of weight that's actually working through that particular spring. That's why all the suspension engineering textbooks, they don't talk about spring rates, they talk about natural frequencies. What natural frequency do we want on the front? What natural frequency do we want on the back? And if you want to get really tricky, what natural frequency in roll and what natural frequency in pitch? So natural frequencies, it's a really good idea to have in your mind because it helps you to describe the behavior of suspension systems in such a clear, accurate way. Now, the other thing that's really exciting is you can directly measure natural frequencies using a smartphone and an app. I'm going to cover that in another video, but that suddenly put it all into the realm of someone who can use this information when they're developing suspension, when they're measuring suspension. Take a step back. Natural frequency describes how stiff or how soft the suspension is, taking into account all the different variables, not just spring stiffness, but all those other things that actually have a dramatic influence on the resulting outcome. The book's called Custom Air Suspension. Because natural frequencies are particularly important in air suspension cars, I cover a whole chapter on this topic, but it's also, as I've said, applicable to any car. Any car that's got springing, uh, the idea of natural frequencies is, 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 can be applied. Custom Air Suspension, interesting book, and I recommend it to you. Thank you.